Hi everyone, welcome to today's video where today we are talking about how to calculate the discriminant. The discriminant is a small little part of the quadratic formula, which you've already learned at this point. You know the quadratic formula it goes along to the song x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Yeah, that one. I know you know it. I know my song was cringy, but it is what it is. But the value that's underneath the square root, the b squared minus 4ac, that little value there is called the discriminant. And what we're going to do is we're going to calculate that discriminant, just the b squared minus 4ac, and we're going to discover that just calculating the discriminant lets me know whether or not there's going to be two solutions, one solution, or actually no solutions to the equation. Before you actually even solve the rest of the equation, just that discriminant tells you quite a bit. So here are the three things that we're going to be taking a look at. We're going to see that if the b squared minus 4ac is a value that's greater than zero, which means it's a positive value, that's going to result in there being two real solutions. If we calculate the discriminant of b squared minus 4ac and we get zero as the answer, that's going to mean that there's only one solution to that polynomial equation. And if we get a negative value, if that b squared minus 4ac ends up being some negative number, then we're going to discover that that would be an equation that has no solutions at all. So let's take a look together. The first example that we're going to see is the situation where there's going to be two solutions. So we're going to get a positive value for our discriminant. So let's take a look. Ready? It first says state the value of the discriminant. So here I have this equation, 12x squared plus 5x equals 4. Now the problem is this equation is not in the proper form where it's set equal to 0. So that's the very first thing that we need to do. We need to set this equation equal to 0. So by simply subtracting 4 on both sides, we end up getting 12x squared plus 5x minus 4 equals 0. And when I have it set up that way, I can now properly state my values for a, b, and c. My a value is 12, my b value is 5, my c value is negative 4. Now my job is to substitute these values in for b squared minus 4ac. So 5 squared minus 4 times my a is 12 times my c of negative 4. Now, 5 squared is 25, so that's simple. Don't bring over any signs ever. In any of my videos, I never show you to bring signs. I just tell you to multiply it. So you would do negative 4 times 12, which is negative 48, and then do negative 48 times negative 4, which would end up giving you positive 192. 25 plus 192 is 217. Now, because the discriminant is positive, if I was just answering the question of, hey, how many solutions would this equation have? You would be able to just say, oh, it's got two solutions because my discriminant is positive. If I actually asked you to find the solutions, we would use our quadratic formula. So it would be x equals negative b. So we've got negative 5 plus or minus the square root. Now, we already did the b squared minus 4ac work over here. I'm not going to have us repeat it. So we could just simply bring over that 217 all over 2a, so 2 times 12. So this now becomes negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 217. 217 is not a perfect square, so I'm just going to leave it under the radical for this time, over 24. And then I use the plus sign to get my first solution and the minus sign to get my second solution. Um, and if I do that and I get use my calculator for it, I'm going to round to the tenths place. Uh, negative 5 plus the square root of 217 divided by 24 is 0.4, and then negative 5 minus the square root of 217 divided by 24 would give me about negative 0.8. Now what this means is if I was to take this equation and actually graph it on the coordinate plane, it would cross the x-axis in two places, and those two places on the x-axis would be these numbers, 0.4 and negative 0.8. The second problem is an example of where we're going to have just one solution. So Let's set this equation equal to 0, so this becomes x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals 0. I can then see my a, b, and c values. My a is my 1, my b is negative 8, my c is 16. I can then substitute in to get my b squared minus 4ac. So this becomes negative 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times 16. Negative 8 squared is 64. Negative 4 times 1 times 16 is negative 64, which becomes 0. So what we're going to see is when you have a discriminant of 0, there's only one solution to the equation. 
If I was to now, let's say, take the same equation and use my quadratic formula, so it's x equals negative b, so negative negative 8, plus or minus the square root, we already found our b squared minus 4ac, it's 0, all over 2a, so 2 times 1. Negative negative 8 becomes positive 8, plus or minus the square root of 0 is just 0, and now notice, 8 plus 0 is 8, divided by 2 is 4. 8 minus 0 is 8, divided by 2 is also 4. You only get one answer, guys, and that will happen every single time the discriminant is 0. This would mean if I was to graph it, it would just cross the x-axis at that one point of 4. So I'm just tying in these little sample graphs to remind you about what that means when you have one solution when you look at a graph. And this goes right along with it when we are um, using the quadratic formula. Last one. This is going to be where our discriminant is negative, and we're going to see what happens. So first off, we want to set this equation equal to 0. So let's go ahead and add 4 on both sides. We then see our a is 2, our b is 3, our c is 4. So b squared minus 4ac. So 3 squared minus 4 times 2 times 4. So 3 squared is 9. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 times 4 is negative 32. And 9 minus 32 is negative 23. Now think about this for a moment. If I was to go ahead and plug this into my quadratic formula, I would have to take the square root of this negative 23. We can't take the square roots of negative numbers. That's not a real number. Right now in Algebra 1, all we know are real numbers. In Algebra 2, you'll start talking about imaginary numbers and actually what it means to take the square root of a negative. But right now for Algebra 1, that just can't happen. So since the square root of negative 23 has no real solutions, we can't get any solutions to this equation. And that would actually be when you have a parabola that never touches the x-axis. That's what it looks like when there's no solutions there. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.